It looks like Team Rocket is here to stay, and battling Team Rocket might be something you want to improve at. Maybe you already have a good Rocket beating down squad, but you're a little bit worried about what may come in the future, or maybe you're just struggling all the time with Team Rocket and you want some good tips on which Pokemon to invest in. Well, in this video, I'm going to be giving you some key resources to help you best decide which Pokemon to power up to beat down Team Rocket. I'm going to let you know what the best general counters are, and I'm also going to help you understand why they're good. And then while I'm at it, I'm going to debunk some myths. Some people out there saying that uh, Smackdown Agron is a good idea. Please, don't use Agron for anything, really. But yeah, let's get into it. Team Rocket, better watch out. Starting out, two good resources. You have the comprehensive DPS TDO spreadsheet from GamePress. If you set it to the PvP mode by checking this box, then you have a list of the generally best PvP counters by Master League CP. You can also put in a CP cap if you're curious about other leagues. I can't really attest to how good this is for PvP in general, but for the Master League and especially Rocket Battles, this does give you a pretty comprehensive list as far as what the best investments are. And the reason why these investments are good is because Rocket battles are essentially PvP battles in the Master League. Yes, their Pokemon do have inflated stats, but at the end of the day, this is unlimited Master League PvP. It doesn't have to be anything more complicated than that. So just keep that in the back of your mind. And then another good resource is freaking Poke Battler, Cilandro, Master of All Knowledge has made a Team Rocket tab so you can find out who the best overall counters are for each specific Rocket Pokemon. So how to use these resources? Well, use this list, or you could also use PV Poke's Master League list or Poke Battler's Master League list. Um, you use these resources, find out what the best overall Master League Pokemon are. That's your base, right? And uh, let's say you don't have all these Pokemon, or one specific Pokemon's giving you a bunch of issues. Well, that's where Poke Battler comes in, right? Now, I understand that a lot of you guys, you don't want to use these resources. You want everything done for you, and well, I'm here for that as well. So I'm going to let you guys know what the two Pokemon are. Just two Pokemon uh, that you should dump your Stardust into to best take down Team Rocket. It's actually quite simple. And uh, bam, here we are. Number one, Dialga. Number two, Giratina. It can be the origin form or the altered form, up to you. I'm going to promote the origin form more, though, because it's better for raids, so you can get that cross usage. Like, if you're going to max out a Giratina, you may as well max out the one that's good for raids, right? So yeah, these two Pokemon, very stellar options. And why are these Pokemon so freaking good? Three reasons. Bam! Right here. Big stats. Of course, Master League Pokemon, they gotta have big stats. They've got good resistances. Dragon and Steel type here. Very synergistic and powerful resistances. And then you got Giratina with that ghost typing, being able to handle things that Dialga might not enjoy to fight, such as fighting type Pokemon. And then good moves. We got Dragon Breath over here. That's all you really need to know. And then Giratina, extremely versatile with its movesets. The origin form doesn't really need to be versatile. Ghost type damage, extremely pervasive. And Dragon Breath, dragon type damage, also extremely pervasive. You might be looking at this and going, well, Ryan Swag, everybody, I think a lot of people are talking about Dialga already, right? But nobody's really mentioning this Giratina guy. Um, but I'm hearing a lot of hype about Tyranitar, in particular Smackdown Tyranitar. Well, why is Tyranitar good? Well, first off, big stats. That's like El Numero Uno, right? Obviously Tyranitar has big stats. And resistances. This is the key selling point for Tyranitar. Dark typing. Think about the hardest Team Rocket Pokemon to fight right now. In my opinion, and objectively, overall, it's Snorlax. Snorlax has two fast moves. It has Lick and Zen Headbutt. Lick, ghost type damage, resisted by dark type Pokemon. And then you've got Zen Headbutt, psychic type damage, doubly resisted by dark type Pokemon. And that is why Tyranitar is good. Let's go over to Poke Battler. Bam. And we can click here, Shadow Snorlax, scroll down, oh, who is that? El Numero Uno, Tyranitar, Smackdown Tyranitar, but who's number two? But Weavile, another dark type Pokemon. And to be honest, Weavile is pretty good in PvP overall. I'm not going to try to sell it short here, um, but not as impressive as like Metagross or Dialga or Melmetal, for instance, right? So why is Weavile here? Well, because Weavile's a dark type Pokemon. Resists Lick resists Zen Headbutt. 
That's why it's so awesome. Now, you could get specific with the counters, which is also revealing. Like if you were to check out the Lick moveset in particular, well, bam, now Ursaring's on top. And we got Porygon Z, Star Raptor, Slack King coming out of nowhere. Why are these guys all of a sudden good? Well, because Lick is a ghost type attack. Normal type Pokemon doubly resist ghost type attacks. And then Ursaring here, super effective damage with counter and close combat. Obviously, that guy's going to be on top. But Tyrantar, still number two. Ooh, with that smackdown, right? But at the end of the day, the thing I really want to get across to you guys is that it's not that Tyrantar is smackdown. It's because Tyrantar has big stats, number one, and two, good resistances, which is also very important. It's so important that it's bringing Weavile up to snuff in this battle. Now, Everyone's hyping about this SmackDown, so much so that people are saying if you don't have a SmackDown Tyranitar, then power up a SmackDown Rhyperior, or dare I say it, some people are even recommending powering up a SmackDown Agron. I don't understand it. But the thing is, is a lot of these people, what they're not understanding is that it's not SmackDown that's pulling the weight here, it's Tyranitar that's pulling the weight. So if you don't have a SmackDown Tyranitar or a SmackDown Tyranitar with good IVs, don't break your back trying to trade for one. Just use a normal Bite Tyranitar. It's that simple. And uh, looking at it here, you can see that if you click on the specifics, right, you'll see that SmackDown with Stone Edge, that power is 149.5, right? Bite with Crunch is 114.1. So 114.1, right? Obviously not as impressive as the 149.5. But, more impressive than Weavile, Weavile's at 106, Ursaring's at 104. So yeah, Bite Tyranitar is a step down from Smackdown Tyranitar, but it's still really freaking good, and it's still going to get the job done. And at the end of the day, do you absolutely 100% need Tyranitar to do these fights? Well, no, obviously not. We got Weavile, we got Ursaring, we got Metagross, we got Melmetal. So you're not, you don't have to use Tyranitar. It's just, what I want you guys to understand is why Tyranitar is good. And it's not SmackDown that makes it good, it's the fact that it's a Dark-type Pokemon. So riffing off the idea that SmackDown Tyranitar is better than Bite Tyranitar, but Tyranitar is still good, um, well, what about Dialga and Giratina? What if you don't have a Giratina? What if you don't have a Dialga? And I'm going to be honest with you guys, uh, during the month that Dialga existed, I did not have any time to go out and raid. So uh, I only saw one Dialga, and I didn't even catch it, so I don't have a Dialga. What are you using if you don't have these Supremo Pokemon? Well, think about these core ideas. Big stats, good resistances, good moves. Bam. We got Metagross. Metagross is a Steel-type Pokemon. Big stats, good resistances, Steel-type resistances, and good moves. Meteor Mash. Really awesome. Also exclusive. So, if you uh, didn't got Meteor Mash Metagross, maybe look at Dialga. And if you don't have either of these guys, well, there's plenty of other Pokemon to look towards. Other Pokemon that work out well are... You know, the Dragon Breath, Dragonite, also highly exclusive legacy move. If you don't have that Dragonite, you don't have a Dialga, well, you got the Laddie Twins. They both got Dragon Breath, really good attacks. So, pretty good investments for taking down Team Rocket, right? You got Lugia as well. Lugia, stellar resistances, big stats. It's got Sky Attack, which is an awesome attack. So, all these Pokemon work out extremely well for being down Team Rocket. Maybe they're not the best specific counters to certain things, but they will get the job done. And because of that, you know, you don't have to power up like 10 different Pokemon to take on each different Team Rocket that you fight. You only need just a handful of really, really good ones, and shazam, you got it. Um, but there is a lot to be said for specific counters. For example, let's take our boy Leafeon here. If you look at Swampert's fight, let's go back to Poke Badler. Shadow Swampert is a water and ground type Pokemon that primarily uses water and ground type attacks. It's doubly weak to Grass-type Pokemon, and Grass-type Pokemon are going to resist the majority of its moves. Well, who better to take them down than the Leafeon, right? But other Pokemon are Grass-types too. Tangrowth, Tropius, Venusaur, Blossom, Alolan, Executor. I mean, the list goes on. Here's a whole bunch of Grass-type Pokemon, and then we get back down to like more general options like Palkia, Giratina origin form, that Pokemon I was talking about before. How about that? What is he doing here? So obviously... Specific counters will get a specific job done better. I mean, also think back to Lick Snorlax with Ursaring. Normal type Pokemon with fighting type attacks. Specific counter, better than Tyranitar. So getting specific about it is fine too and can be better in some times. So general principle 
to get across to you guys is invest in just a handful of really powerful things that work against the majority of Pokemon you're going to fight against Steam Rocket. And should the time come that there is one particular Rocket battle that is giving you a lot of trouble, well then check out Poke Battler, find out what the specific options are against that one particular Pokemon, and then invest in that to make that fight that much smoother. It's, it's not rocket science. I know we're fighting Team Rocket, guys, but it's not rocket science. Coming back to this, another uh, interesting niche Pokemon I like to promote here is uh, Magnezone. Magnezone has Steel-type resistances. It has Spark, which is a really good fast move. It's got Wild Charge and Flash Cannon, which are good charge moves. And Gyarados is pretty tough, and Gyarados does have a double weakness to Electric-type hits. So if you don't have Metagross, you don't have Dialga, you want a Steel-type Pokemon that works out well, don't pick Aggron. Please, for the love of everything, don't pick Aggron. Pick Magnezone. I want you to comment below, let me know what sort of rocket job that Aggron's going to do better, that Magnezone doesn't already have on lock, because like, seriously guys, get, get over it. So there you have it. Being Team Rocket doesn't have to be rocket science. I know it's Team Rocket, doesn't have to be rocket science. Use good general Master League Pokemon. Use any resource you want to, it's pretty simple, like DPS TDO spreadsheet I like, you got PV Poke, you got Poke Battler itself. Check out what Pokemon are good in the Master League, and those Pokemon, more often than not, are gonna be awesome for beating down Team Rocket, because Team Rocket is the Master League right? Not complicated. And if there is a particular Pokemon in general that is giving you a lot of harassment, let's say it's like Swampert, for instance, well then use Poke Battler's Rocket tab, find out what the specific answer is to that one particular annoying Pokemon, and then bam, now you ain't got no issues with that one particular Pokemon. These aren't the only Pokemon you should power up for fighting Team Rocket. The main things that you have to get into your mind when it comes to taking on Team Rocket is big stats, good resistances, and good moves. And many Pokemon will work out for you. Even SmackDown Aggron, you can have success with. I mean, I've been beating Team Rocket guys down with Great League Pokemon until I realized that you just have to set a Master League team, and then you can use Master League Pokemon. Then things got way easier for me. But yeah, Great League Pokemon can take down a lot of these guys, so it's not hard. But if you are having issues with it, follow these principles. Follow those basic guidelines, use those resources, and you should never have an issue with a Team Rocket member. So, yeah. I hope this video has been enlightening for you. If you like this content you want to see more like it, well then, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. And uh, if you got any questions on this content you want them answered, well, comment below, let me know what's up, and I'll see if I can help you out. Most importantly guys, this is not a tier list. This isn't a tier list. These aren't the only Pokemon that work. Be creative. Follow the base principles. These are just Pokemon that do work. Other Pokemon work too. So, if you're going to comment below and be like, Well, Ryan Swag, I use Smackdown Rhyperior and it beats Charizard and Crobat. Like, no duh guys. It's a rock type Pokemon using rock type attacks against flying type Pokemon. Of course Rhyperior works against those guys. So, I mean, salt, salt if you want to, man, but I, I'm going to agree with you, so, eh.